Is Russia part of Europe? Is Russia part of Asia? What does it mean to be Russian? How does Russia view its place in the world? The answers to these questions have changed throughout Russia's history. British historian Geoffrey Hosking described Russia as, quote, the Russian Federation with citizenship independent of ethnic origin. He goes on to say, but in practice few Russians would be prepared to concede that the present-day Russian Federation embodies what they understand as Russia. Russia's geography and history present it with unique challenges. The ancestor of the modern Russian state was the state of Kievan Rus. Kievan Rus was made up of a number of different ethnicities and tribes and was ruled by an elite of Norse seafarers. The three modern-day countries of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus all claim to have originated from Kievan Rus. Prince Vladimir of Russia introduced Christianity to the people of Rus and had pagan idols in the city of Kiev destroyed. Rus's decision to embrace Orthodox Christianity over the Catholicism of her Western neighbors and the Islam of her Eastern and Southern neighbors would alienate Rus from the outside world. Rus's choice to adopt Orthodox Christianity would bind Rus to the Byzantine Empire. Now, Russia was not just a patchwork of different tribes united under Varangian rule. Russia now viewed itself as the Third Rome. As the Russian Empire expanded throughout the centuries, it would absorb more and more non-Slavic nationalities within its borders. Nearly 200 different ethnic groups reside within the Russian Federation's current borders. Like the Holy Roman Empire, Russia had to learn to govern and unite a large number of disparate nationalities and cultures. Also like the Holy Roman Empire, Russia was imbued with a divine mission. The polity known as Russia has its origins in Eastern Europe, and its position at the periphery of the European continent has allowed it access to the West without fully integrating into it. Most of Russia's population lives within the European portion of the country west of the Urals. Without a doubt, the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union played an important role in shaping the Europe we know today. At no point was this more evident than during the Cold War. The Soviet Union exercised control over the eastern portion of Europe. Even today, Russia maintains economic ties to several European countries as an energy supplier. The fur trade drove Russia's eastward expansion. As the Russian Empire expanded, it would encounter other powers in the Far East, such as Japan and China. In 1689, the Tsardom of Russia and Qing China signed the Treaty of Nerchinsk. This was the first treaty between China and Russia. Russian settlement of the Far East began in earnest in the 1800s. In 1850, a Russian naval officer named Gennady Nevelskoy established Russia's first settlement in the Far East. As Russia increased its presence in the Far East, she was bound to clash with an emerging Japan. This clash came in the form of the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905. Russia's defeat in this war would diminish its stature in the region. Following the Second World War, the USSR supported Mao's China and propped up the new communist regime in North Korea. After Stalin's death, relations soured between the USSR and China. Within the communist sphere, China and the USSR were in competition with each other. In the decades that followed after the USSR's collapse, Russia and China have cooperated as strategic partners on a number of issues, but not as formal allies. Having the US as a common enemy has driven the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China together. However, this is mostly a marriage of convenience. China is one of Russia's biggest trading partners. The post-Soviet republics of Central Asia still maintain close ties to Russia as well. Economically and politically, Russia's ties to Asia are critical. What defines Russia's identity? Russian political scientist Dmitry Trenin wrote, Over the 1250 years or so of its official statehood, it has changed not only its name but also its identity many times, while retaining key features. Until 1917, the term Russian itself described all Eastern Slavs, including Ukrainians and Belarusians. Ethnic Russians, in this case meaning East Slavs, still make up the majority of the Russian Federation's current population. Orthodox Christians are still the majority in Russia. Indeed, the Russian Orthodox Church still wields considerable power within Russian society. As the Russian polity expanded, the definition of Russian would broaden. Diplomatic relations are never static. Relationships between various nations are always subject to the whims of circumstance. This is evidenced numerous times throughout Russian history. Russian policymakers throughout history have described Russia's role in the world as a whole in vastly different ways. From an East Slavic Orthodox Christian domain to an internationalist atheist superpower challenging the hegemony of the United States, Russia's view of where it belongs in the greater world has evolved just as the political and economic circumstances around her have evolved. Two different schools of thought have directed Russian foreign policy, Eurasianism and Atlanticism. 
Eurasianism calls for Russia to embrace its non-European characteristics and rejects the notion that Russia is a part of Europe. Atlanticism, on the other hand, promotes the idea that Russia should align itself closer to the liberal democracies of the West. As we are now seeing, the former school of thought, at present, has won out against the latter. Russia is a part of both Europe and Asia, but not fully integrated into either continent. Dmitry Trenin would go on to write, Rather than standing as before, facing Europe and America while turning its back on Asia, Russia may imagine itself sitting in a swivel chair, addressing the opportunities and challenges as they emerge along its 60,000 kilometer perimeter of borders and shoreline. Due to its political and economic evolution, Russia should be considered its own independent entity rather than as a part of the East or the West. What do you guys think? Should Russia cultivate closer relationships with illiberal regimes in the East, such as China, Syria, and Iran, or with the democracies of Europe and North America? Will the conflict in Ukraine impact the way Russians think about their country's place in the world? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.